Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel, Raina Taboo. I'm Raina, the owner of T's Accessory Boutique, and today we are finally going to be jumping into those rolling tray tutorials. I keep getting so many questions in my DMs and in my instant messages about how I do my rolling tray sets. So today I decided I was going to walk you through the process step by step. But before we get into all of that, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and you hit that little bell so that you're notified whenever I'm posting new content. Let's get started. first thing I wanted to do was show you all I'm using the Silhouette Cameo design space and I wanted to make sure my Cameo was set on the proper settings and then I proceeded to cut the decal that I will be using for the tray. All right, I've gathered the supplies to get my tray started. I'm going to be painting this particular tray. I have my three ounce bowl that I will be prepping for paint by taking my electrical tape and taping around the entire rim of the bowl. That way I can leave the rim untouched. I also have this ball mason jar from Walmart. I will be taking the lid off of that and painting that gray as well. And for my tray, I like to prime my trays with white gloss paint because I feel like it makes the color pop a little bit more and I only need to use one coat of the color when I do that. And for the color of the tray, I'll be using dark gray Rust-Oleum gloss paint as well. I will be painting my accessories to my tray set in the dark gray as well. And I also have a white lighter, which we will get to later. I will show you how to paint that in the dark gray also. So let's go ahead and get this to a ventilated area so that we can paint it. Before we take this to the garage, I just wanted to show you how I tape off the bowl along the rim as stated before. And I leave myself a little pull tab so that once the paint is dry, it's easy to pull the tape off with very minimal damage. So it turns out my white paint can was completely empty. I thought I had enough to finish this tray, but I didn't. So I had to go to the next light color that I had, which was this beige color, and it's still a Rust-Oleum gloss paint. So it will still do the job and act as a primer. While we're waiting on our other pieces to dry, we're going to go ahead and get the lighter prepped for painting as well. I'm going to be using my electrical tape for this. I'm just taking it out of the package and on the back of each lighter, there is a sticker. So we're going to have to make sure that we get that sticker off and all of the sticker residue that comes with it. Sometimes the sticker residue is a little hard to get off. What I like to do is use rubbing alcohol in a small towel just to kind of rub across it if I don't get all of the residue in the first peeling.
now that we've gotten all of the sticker residue off, I'm going to cut a decent size piece of electrical tape because I'm going to be using this tape to wrap around the top of the lighter. The electrical tape makes it so much easier to paint because it stretches so well along the curves and it gives you a nice clean edge when you're finished painting. Now we can set that to the side because it's ready and prepped for painting. I'm about to prep my cups for my epoxy pouring so that I don't have to worry about that once my tray is finished drying. What I use is my electrical tape. People always ask me my measurements. I never know. I always take my electrical tape and a marker and I just run it across the cup in the same exact spot. This measurement I know is good for two trays which I'm only making one, so I will be using the extra epoxy for something else. But it's a surefire way to always get the same exact amount on each cup when you do your pouring of the two parts. You can always use any other object to vary the measurements instead of electrical tape. It's been about 20 minutes since my first coat on my tray, and now I'm ready to go in with color. This should be the only coat that I need. I coat it really well as you can see and if I missed any spots I kind of just go and I give it a light spray the way I paint my lighter is I hold it at a fair distance away from me and away from the can and I just give it light sprays on both sides and on the bottom of the lighter. This is where my floral foam comes in. I just wanted to show you how I store my lighters when I'm waiting for them to dry. You can stick several in at one time. Okay, so I forgot to film the part where I sprayed the edges of my tray with this Krylon triple thick crystal clear glaze. It works really well and it makes your edges really shiny, which will match the epoxy in the middle once we're done. Once your tray is completely dry, you are now ready to apply your decal or your sticker or whatever it is you will be using in the middle of your tray. Like I said earlier, I pre-cut this decal so that it would be ready when I was ready to use it. Instead of taking the decal and the contact paper at the same time like I would normally do, I'm not going to be using the contact paper onto the tray because the tray is freshly painted and I don't want the paint to be irritated in any way by the contact paper. And because my decal is one big piece, it's much easier to just use it as a sticker and take the big sticker off and place it with my hands instead of the contact paper.
the client wanted their nickname on the tray as well so I cut out a decal for that I'm going to be placing that decal individually and not with a contact paper just like before because like I said I don't want the paint irritated in any way just in case there are some spots that need to dry a little longer If you allow your trays to dry for at least 24 hours, you won't have to do what I'm doing and taking each individual sticker and placing it with your tool. I only did this for video's sake because I really wanted to get this video up to you guys and I didn't want to have to wait another day before my tray was completely dry. But if your tray is completely dry, you can go ahead and adhere your decals with the contact paper. It's so much faster and so much easier. Now that my decals are all in place, I'm just going to sit this to the side because it's time for the fun part, mixing the epoxy. Now the epoxy usually comes with two parts, A and B. This is the hardener, which is a little thicker than the resin part, which I'm about to show you in a second. I'm not quite sure which part is A and which part is B. I don't refer to them as that. I refer to them as resin and hardener. And I know that the resin is a thinner pour so whenever I'm mixing, I always pour the resin into the hardener because it's just easier to get that out of the cup. And I'll be stirring it using a wooden stick. What we're going to do is mix the equal parts. Once we mix them, we're going to do that for about five minutes. I like to do it for five minutes for this size. If I did a little bit less, I would do it for three minutes. But you want to make sure that when you mix it, it becomes completely clear and it's not cloudy like it is when you first pour it together.
Make sure when you're pouring the resin into the hardener, you're scraping all of the sides of the cup and all of the bottom of the cup. You want to get as much resin out of that cup as you possibly can. What I do is I just scrape, 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 and then I will use the cup to kind of slide it off of the popsicle stick and into the other cup. And I just keep repeating that process till I've got almost all of the resin out of the cup. And now that the two parts are mixed in there, you can see how streaky and how cloudy it is. You want to just stir slowly and you want to scrape the sides of the cup as you're stirring as well to make sure you're getting it all mixed in together until it's very clear. All right, I've been mixing for about five minutes and my epoxy is completely clear. As you can see, there are tiny bubbles all through it, but we will take care of those later. It's time to pour the epoxy onto the tray. And what I like to do when I pour is start in my corners and kind of work my way around all four corners and along the middle. And I'm only going to be pouring half of this cup because like I said, this is enough for two trays. Once it's poured, I'll set the extra epoxy to the side and I will go ahead and use my fingers and my glove and I will start smoothing out all of the epoxy into the corners and along the sides and eventually throughout the middle, just evening it out. This is a self-leveling epoxy, so it will all meet up with each other eventually and level itself out as long as it's on a flat surface. Once I've got all of the epoxy on the tray and the tray is completely covered, I'm trying to show you here that there are tiny bubbles still in my epoxy, but we are going to take care of that using a little bit of heat. Some people like to use a little lighter or a torch. Some people like to use a heat gun. I personally like to use a straw on these projects because it's just so much easier to take a straw and hover over the top and blow out all of those little bubbles. The camera is not really picking up well what's happening, but I am simply blowing into the straw and getting all of those bubbles out. You will be able to see it in person and I keep changing it around so that I can look at it in a different light just to make sure that I am popping all of the bubbles. Now you can see that the tray is completely smooth and bubble free 
and the epoxy takes about eight hours to dry so that you can manipulate it but it needs a full 24 to 48 hours to cure properly so i'm just going to go ahead and sit this to the side and allow that to dry while we work on our other parts of the set Now that the top and the bowl are completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and reattach my top to my jar so that I do not lose it because I tend to misplace little things like that. I'm going to sit that to the side and I'm going to go ahead and peel the tape off of my bowl. If you notice, I'm wearing gloves for this part and that's because when I paint on the electrical tape, the paint on the tape for some reason never dries. So I don't want to get paint all over my hands and make my hands sticky. So what I'm doing now is just peeling the tape off in a downward motion. It kind of looks like I'm struggling to get it off, but I'm really not pulling hard at all. I'm just making sure that I keep the tape angled in a downward motion and I'm going extremely slow so that I can maintain a straight edge on the paint. Now I didn't mention this in the supply list and that's because sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. But I'm going to be taking a foam brush and my Mod Podge and I'm going to be putting a thin layer on both my jar lid and on my bowl because most of the time I paint it with my clear spray paint but because I want to get this video done and I want to show you the rest of the steps. The Mod Podge dries a lot quicker and it will not damage the paint once I put the decals on the other pieces. So I wanted to go ahead and show you this step in case this is something you want to try yourself. For the lid, I will just be Mod Podging the very top of it and it will be the thinnest of layers. And that goes for the bowl as well. I will be Mod Podging wherever there is paint on the bowl and it will be a very, very thin layer. Once the lighter is completely dry, I will be Mod Podging the thinnest of layers on that as well. And once I Mod Podge it, I can then remove the tape and stick it back into my floral foam and allow that to dry for a little while.
Now that all of my accessories are dry, it's time to apply the decals. And I will be using the contact paper method for both the top of the jar and the lighter because I Mod Podge both of them and the Mod Podge is acting as a barrier over the paint so it will not damage my fresh paint. I don't remember the exact measurements of my decals, but I will find them and I will put them in the description box below. And it is as simple as that. Once all of your decals are applied, you are finished and you have your very own rolling tray set. Like I mentioned before, I get a lot of questions on my social media pages, which will be linked down below in the description box. I hope that this answered all of those questions for you and made it very clear on the process and the steps that I take to achieve the rolling tray set. If not, feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'm here to answer all of your questions. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and I would love for you to tag me in the rolling trays that you come up with. Also, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Leave me comments down below. And as always, thank you.